Okay, so this one actually looks very, very simple, and you'll see in a moment why I'm doing it, not because it's difficult, but because it includes some extra ideas. Okay, so we're asked to find g of 0. That just means that instead of the t, we have to replace a 0. So everywhere where there's a t will be 0, so this would be 0 to the power of 4 is just 0, minus 8 times 0 squared is just 0, so these first two terms will cancel, and I'll be left with 3. Okay, now we're asked to find the derivative in the point zero, which means we first need to find the derivative. This one's derivative is not a problem at all. So we first find the, the derivative in terms of t, because this expression is in terms of t. So 4 times negative 1 gives me negative 4t to the power, 1 gets subtracted, 3. 2 times negative 8 gives me negative 16t to the power of 2. Now when I plus 3, 3, that's actually x to the power of 0, so when I multiply the 0 in front, I get 0. Or you can just remember that the derivative of a constant is, in other words, a term without the derivative, uh, what is it, variable, will always be 0. So this is plus 0, so I'm not even going to write it. So now when I substitute, oh, sorry, I wrote that at the wrong place, let me just move it up. Okay, um, now move it to its correct position, there we go. Now when I substitute to find the answer, I find that if if I make t zero, these uh, both terms have t as a factor. So that means this whole expression will be zero because I'll have negative four times zero uh, is zero, negative 16 times zero is zero, so my result is zero, okay? Now I find the second derivative in the point zero. Now please don't think that that means I find the second derivative of this expression. No, that was the derivative in a point. I need the second derivative of this expression first. So that's what we're first going to do. Second derivative, okay, is the second derivative of this one first. So we find the first derivative, which we already have, and then we find that derivative again. 3 times 4 is 12 gets a negative 12, t to the power of 2, minus 16 times t squared, this 2 gets multiplied, gives me negative 32, t times 1. Okay. Now, again, I see all of my terms contain t as a factor, which means if I substitute 0, my answer will be 0. So the second derivative in the point 0 is also equal to 0. Okay, so are we going to assume that the rest are all 0? Okay, of course not, of course not. We are going to do it properly by doing each step. And the next one would be taking the third derivative. So we take this is the second derivative. If we find that derivative again, we're taking the third derivative. And this is where the um, lesson comes in is the third derivative. Third derivative is just the derivative of the second derivative, just like the second derivative is the derivative of the first derivative. So we just do this again. Negative 2 times 12 is negative 24. T. 2 to the minus 1 is 1. I don't need to write that. 1 times negative 32 gives me negative 32. T to the power of 1 minus 1 is 0. So T to the power of 0 is just 1. I don't need to write that, so I don't. Okay, and now we see, oh, we would have made a terrible mistake if we sub if we made this just 0, because this time both of my terms do not contain a T. So actually at this point, we have that the answer is negative 32 if I substitute T with 0. Okay, the next one. Okay, well, for the next one, you'll see now, instead of using these little tick marks or tally marks, I don't know what exactly they are, we now um, rather write in brackets a 4. So this means the fourth derivative. What that simply means is I take the derivative four times. So I've taken it three times already up to that point. So four times would be, if I take the derivative four times in terms of t, this is a 1 times 24 is negative 24. We've already said that the derivative of a constant is always 0, so that's just plus 0. So this is my fourth derivative, is negative 24, which means that my answer here, since there's no t's to substitute 0 in, doesn't mean my answer is 0. No, it's negative 24 no matter what t is even if t is 0. So we've got negative 24, and now finally my fifth derivative, 
what color are we going to make it? Let's just go for purple. Is the derivative of this. Okay, the fifth derivative in terms of t, I mean, shouldn't forget that, is just the derivative of a constant. So this is zero. The sixth derivative and the seventh one and every consecutive derivative after the fourth one will always be zero because I'll always just have now a zero to find the derivative of is just zero, zero, zero. So from here on out it will all be zero. So even in the point when t is equal to zero, there's no t to substitute. So this is just my my expression uh, or my value for t no matter what, uh, for my expression no matter what t is. So finally my derivative in my fifth derivative in the point zero is also equal to zero. Okay. And uh, yeah, as you can see, it's really simple. If you understand what higher order derivatives are, that's what we call this, higher order derivatives. Okay, see you in the next video.